Hello everyone and welcome back to Rebooted MCU. Today we are here with Rebooted MCU Phase 4 Part 9. Now before we get into the video, I want to encourage you all to join the Discord in the link in the description below, as well as follow the Instagram page. And while you're at it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. We just hit 600 subscribers and I want to thank all of you for checking out these videos and supporting me along the way. We have a lot further to go. We are almost to 1,000 subscribers. Let's see how fast we can hit that goal. But with that being said, we have a big video today. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. The ninth project of rebooted MCU Phase 4 is The Defenders. The movie opens up with the theme from New York, New York by Frank Sinatra as we see a plane flying into New York. We cut inside the plane as we see Clint Barton, played by Jeremy Renner, looking outside of a window. We cut to his point of view as we notice that smog is covering the city, the same smog that was caused by the gas released by Mr. Fear at the very end of King of the Neighborhood. Clint turns to Barbara Barton, played by Linda Cardellini, and says, You are sure Kate said she's okay, right? It does not look good down there. Yes, honey, I've texted her three times now. She is assuring me that she's staying inside and she's not going to go out until this mess is taken care of. Good. I can't imagine what monster did this. But hey, once the Bartons are done with them, they're going to regret ever messing with New York. You got that right. Did you take the medicine Fury told us about? He said that according to Reed, taking it should leave us immune to the effects of this gas for at least 24 hours, roughly. I'll take some right now. Thankfully, it won't take us 24 hours to fix this mess. We watch as Clint swallows a pill as a plane starts descending into New York as the title card appears on screen. We cut inside Matt Murdock's apartment as we see Matt Murdock, played by Charlie Cox, standing, looking at Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, and Felicia Hardy, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, lying on his couch. They are recovering from the beating they took from Otto Octavius and Wilson Fisk at the end of King of the Neighborhood. Matt speaks up. Claire, what can you tell me about their injuries? Suddenly, watch as a woman stands up from looking over Felicia Hardy. She is revealed to be Claire Temple, otherwise known as the Night Nurse, played by Amandla Stenberg. She looks at Matt and says, Well, Peter has severe bruising in his back and torn ligaments all over. His tissue and bones, though, they're a lot denser than a normal human being. So even though he has all of these back bruises and torn ligaments, they're not going to impact him as much as it would me and you. Felicia, on the other hand, she nearly broke her back. She has a major fracture, and it's truly a miracle that she isn't paralyzed. I've done all I can right now, but Matt, you really need to think about taking them to a hospital. These injuries are nothing to mess with. I can't. Both of them have public aliases and private ones. I don't want those exposed. Plus, you're probably better than most in the hospital anyways. Thanks for all your help, as always, Claire. As a reminder, the sanctity of both of their identities is extremely important. Don't tell anyone. And most importantly, be safe heading home. Claire smiles as we watch her put on a mask and walk out of Matt's apartment. We watch as Matt Murdock walks over to the couch Peter is lying on, kneels down, and says, Peter, I'm so sorry you're in this mess. It's my fault. Mr. Fear. He said it was my fault. He knew me by name. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Don't worry. You just need to rest for now. I'll be back for you here soon. Suddenly, we hear the window of Matt's apartment begin to crack as we see Electra, played by Elodie Young, stumble inside as Matt yells, Electra, where were you? I tried to contact you before a battle with Fisk. I've been worried sick. I'm so sorry, Matthew. I heard some rumblings that the hand has been becoming more active once again around the city, and I had to go check it out. Didn't find out much, but needless to say, they were not happy to see me. But as I was heading back, I found myself replaying my worst fear in my head over and over. What do you mean? The gas. It caused me to cut back to the day that Stick was killed by members of the hand. He was my mentor. My friend. There was nothing I could do. It was traumatizing. The fact that I let him down, the fact that he died right in front of me, that image replaying over and over, it's too much to handle. I'm sorry I'm late. 
So, this gas, this neurotoxin, it causes people to replay their most traumatic moments. Moments that cause them fear over and over inside their head. I guess so, Matt. It was truly awful. I really don't want to think about it. I don't know if I could bear going through it again. The man called himself Mr. Fear. It makes sense. Suddenly, he watches the door to Matt's apartment opens as we see Jessica Jones, played by Kirsten Ritter, and Luke Cage, played by Mike Coulter, standing in the doorway. Jessica says, Matt! And oh, Electra, I'm so glad you're okay. Here, Luke and I got this medicine that Fury was telling us about. Some man named Reed Richards said that it should negate the impacts of the gas for a bit. But we have to go. Fury called us to meet him near Oscorp. It's go time. Matt clenches his jaw and nods. We cut inside the lobby of the Oscorp building as we see Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson, standing with Clinton Barbara as we see the door of the Oscorp building open as we watch Daredevil, Elektra, Power Woman, and Power Man walk inside. Fury smiles. Ah, here we are, the group that calls themselves the New York Defenders. Well, you're all going to have to do some defending today. This is getting out of control. That is our goal, Director Fury. What, what are the updates? How's the gas impacted New York so far? Well, we have about 5,000 hospitalized. Hundreds are having panic attacks from what they saw, and those are going to take at least a few weeks to recover. And those numbers are only going to keep growing as we continue to survey more and more communities. I'm sorry. Who are you? Agent Barton. You can call me Hawkeye. This is my wife, Agent Barbara Barton, known as Mockingbird. Two-thirds of the agent's fury called in to help. The other is on her way, but we intend to stop this as soon as possible. It is a pleasure, Mr. Barton and Mrs. Barton. I'm Daredevil, the sort of self-appointed leader of the Defenders. These are my col my friends, Electra, Jessica Jones, known as the Power Woman, and Luke Cage, known as Power Man. Cute. See, I really don't like people who have to tell me that they're a leader. I'm a leader myself. And I'm not also not much of a follower. Unless your name has the words Iron or America in the title, I'm not going to answer to you. So, from here on out, I'll be leading this operation. You got that? Is that so? You're a self-appointed leader as well, huh? Okay, boys, if we're done showing off our egos in front of each other, let's get down to business. Director Fury, what is the plan to get rid of the gas? Well, Reed Richards should be done making his own clean air converter in about five minutes. Then once the machine is turned off, we should be able to absorb all of the gas. But Mr. Fear is still at large, so we need to get that under wraps as soon as possible. Hold on. Richards finished his own clean air converter in a matter of hours without blueprints or anything? Well, when people have given you the title of smartest man alive... There has to be some reason you get that name. He's going to prove it here today. Hold on. Director Fury, you said that the machine is still releasing gas as we speak on top of this very building? Yes. We don't know the specifics of how it works, and we didn't want to mess with it and potentially cause a bigger disaster. Well, I have an idea. I'm going to use my trick arrow and blow it to oblivion. As we see Hawkeye grab his bow and arrows, he begins heading to the roof as Daredevil follows behind him and says... Don't be reckless. This could be dangerous. As Barbara begins to follow, Fury stops her and says, Let those two be. I've seen two hard-headed individuals like them before, and those two guys couldn't be more different, and they clashed a ton. But they worked things out, and they saved the world. Hopefully these guys can do the same thing and save New York. We cut to the top of the Oscorp building as we see Clint walk up, place his bags down, Take out his bow and arrow, and aim an arrow at the clean air converter. Daredevil runs onto the roof and screams, Are you nuts? You have no idea what could happen if you attempt to blow up that device. Yeah, I do. This gas isn't going to be impacting the people of New York anymore, so don't get in my way. Don't! We watch as Clint shoots an arrow at the clean air converter. The machine sparks as the arrow hits, and gas slowly stops dissipating from the machine. A hot wire trick arrow, of my own invention. It overrides the system of any device. I was never going to blow it up. Suddenly we hear someone begin to laugh and clap as Daredevil and Clint turn around as we see Mr. Fear and an unknown man standing near the side entrance of the roof. Mr. Fear chuckles. Very good, Matthew. Very good. 
I see that you still have some brains, and I'm thoroughly surprised to see that you've been making friends as well. Who's this guy? This is the one who calls himself Mr. Fear. Fear, who are you and what do you want with New York? Why, Matthew, it pains me that you don't remember me. Why don't I just go ahead and reveal myself to you? It'll be a grand reunion. Suddenly, we watch as Mr. Fear removes his helmet, revealing himself to be Lawrence Cranston, played by Denzel Washington. Daredevil gasps. Professor Cranston? Wait, so you know this guy? Oh, Mr. Murdoch and I go way back. Why don't you tell him, Matthew? He was my civil procedure professor, my 1-0 year of law school. I always enjoyed your class, Professor Cranston. What is this about? Oh, cut the pleasantries, Matthew. Don't pretend that you've forgotten how you ruined my life. How I ruined your life? As much as I don't want to get in the middle of this law school reunion, it sounds like the implications are impacting innocent people, so why don't you go ahead and spill the beans, or else I'm going to make you spill them. Oh, let's calm down here. I'll be glad to share the tale with you. I was a hard-working child, but always a little socially awkward. An outcast, if you will. My greatest fear was public speaking. I couldn't get up in front of my peers and talk normally. I would get in my head and it would be embarrassing. But I was smart, top of my class, had a passion for law. But still, my greatest setback is that I could not get over my fear of speaking in public. I put myself through law school, took out loans, paid them all off, met a woman, fell in love, and more importantly, I overcame my fear of public speaking through years of hard work, pushing myself over and above my comfort zone. I began teaching civil procedure at Columbia Law School, and let me tell you, there are many students that I remember fondly throughout my time there, but one student that sticks out is Matt Murdock. He was a young man who, despite his very obvious visual impairments, was as smart and as quick as they come. Let me tell you, he had confidence. Even if he got it a question wrong, he never let it impact him. He was a kind of student that any professor would dream of having in class. At least, I thought. Matthew had a spot on the teacher retention committee the year that I was up to receive tenure. And the one reason I didn't receive tenure is because young Matthew Murdoch said I was a bit awkward when I taught. I wasn't a great public speaker. So instead of giving me a stable salary, they fired me, all because Matthew Murdoch didn't understand that despite my years of effort and hard work, public speaking was still something that gave me anxiety. It still filled me with fear. Professor Cranston, I'm sorry. I, I had no idea. Cut the sorrow, boy. You took everything from me. My wife left me because I could no longer support her. I couldn't find a job, and I became hopeless, drowning in my own fear and insecurity. I had to take a loan out from some madman named Wilson Fisk to survive. But that's when I learned the most powerful lesson of all. In order to become powerful yourself, you must leverage the weakness of those in power against them. See, I found something that nobody knew about Fisk. What did you do? I began to dig and dig, and then I found something that Fisk had hidden for years. The death of his father. It was him. His father didn't just mysteriously die. He was the one who caused his demise. And this little piece of information would have greatly damaged Fisk's reputation, especially for a murder that has gone unsolved for years. Man, the police would have eaten that up, especially the ones who were not in his pocket. So I gave him a wager. I would keep this little piece of information quiet if he gave me a cut of his current operations. And let's just say we had an amicable agreement. And, well, let's just say that I began profiting. I hired my own goons, and along with their help, I began developing what you have all witnessed today. Why, it wouldn't have been possible without the help of my dear friend here, Mr. Fester. 
He watches a man standing next to Mr. Fear moves his helmet and is revealed to be Norton Fester, a.k.a. the looter played by Joe Keery. Fester here has some experience with gas. An old experiment gave him incredible strength. He not only shared that gas with me, but we pushed his ideas further and developed fear gas. A gas that would make anyone who inhales it experience their worst fears and most traumatic moments over and over on repeat. We designed it for you, Daredevil, the man without fear being crippled by it. How did you know that I was Daredevil? Matthew, Matthew, I have been following you since you got me fired. I've been tracking you when you've least expected it, and oh yes, you've been so sneaky keeping your little side hustle off the radar of all those you call friends. But not for me. You remember mind games, boy? Well, you and your friends better be prepared, because this is a whole different take on an old law school classic. I'm not ready for you yet, but we're getting there. And then we will see how truly brave you are. But until then, Fester, our first surprise! Suddenly, he watches Fester hits a button on his armband as we hear a massive boom from the underground as we see fear gas begin to emanate from the sewers of New York. What did you do? You better stop those machines. Man, the people of New York will be suffering because of your ego, Matthew. But I'll see you later. And you better be prepared and watch the clock. I don't like people who are late. He watches Fear, then throws a smoke bomb on the ground. As Daredevil and Clint look around, as the smoke clears, we see that Fear and Fester are gone. Clint looks at Daredevil and says, Well, looks like this is going to be a team effort after all. We cut back to Matt's apartment as we see the team watching a news broadcast on the explosion from an hour earlier that released a new batch of fear gas on the citizens of New York. Matt is pacing around the room. I still can't believe it. Professor Cranston. I didn't think that he would hold a grudge this long. This is all my fault. It's not your fault, Matt. Nobody should hold a grudge for this long, and especially not decide that the best way to take out their anger is to release a neurotoxin to attack innocent people. Well, regardless, it happened, and we need to find a way to fix it. Well, we have six of us, an entire underground New York sewer system, where these devices have been activated. Make that seven. Our new recruit is about to arrive. Suddenly, we hear a knock on the door as Clint opens it as we see Elena Belova, played by Florence Pugh, walk in and say, Sorry about that. Alexi and I were catching up, and he's a long talker. All that matters is that you're here now. Everyone, this is Elena Belova. She now goes by the Black Widow. I would tell you all about how amazing she is, but trust me, you will all see soon enough. Glad you're here, Elena. We need to skip the introductions. The longer we wait, the more people are going to be suffering from this gas. Jess, were you able to pull up a map of the sewer system? We watch as Clint hands Jelena a pill to, the, to negate the effects of the fear gas as Jessica lays out an outline of the New York sewer system. From my very limited understanding of how gas disperses into the air when it's released, the only way Mr. Fear could have released as much gas as he did is if he released gas from multiple areas around New York's underground. That's true. That means there are likely multiple devices below New York currently releasing this gas. From what I can tell, the obvious locations where these machines are located are at the furthest ends of both sides of the underground, and probably one directly in the middle. That allows for the most gas to be released, and when combined together, it would have this potent impact on the people in New York as we're seeing right now. I agree, that would make the most sense. So it sounds like the best plan is for us to divide and conquer. Since there are seven of us and three locations that need to be explored, how about we just split into teams? I agree, but let's be frank here. There's no way Mr. Fear doesn't expect us to come and try to stop his plan from being finalized. He almost certainly has traps waiting for us. When he talked to me on the roof, it was as if he views this as some sort of demented game. He's trying to torture me, and along with that, the people of New York. Look, Matt, I know we just met and all, and I'm not someone who gives credit where credit's due. But you've done a lot for New York, and I can respect that. I have a close friend here. We met a few months ago, and she's a young girl with a bright future ahead of her. You've kept New York safe for someone like her. 
And for that, I appreciate it. And we're going to make sure that this is handled. Until this is all said and done, we're a team. So it's settled. Who's going with who? Babe, if it's okay with you, I think Matt and I will go search the central area of the sewer system. That's fine with me. Yelena, do you want to take a look down to the southern part of the sewer system? I'm in. I'll join you two as well. That's the area that's closest to the docks. Perhaps I can convince some members of the hand to stand with us against Mr. Fear. Then it looks like Luke and I will take the northernmost part of the system. I think we got it all figured out then. Matt? Sounds like it. Everyone? I want to thank you. I feel like this is my mess, and it should really be me handling this on my own. But if there's one thing I've learned recently, you have to put trust in people and not take everything on yourself. Thank you for helping me and helping New York. Today, we have to defend New York. Like you called us, Jess. We're the defenders. And now, we're going to see if we're worthy of holding that title. The team stands together as Clint smiles. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. We cut, we cut to Luke Cage and Jessica Jones walking the northern part of the sewer. Jessica looks at Luke and says, I'm proud of you, big guy. Being in close quarters like this, I know it takes a lot for you. Thanks. Yeah, this is making me extremely uncomfortable. But if it means I can protect the innocent people in New York, then I would do whatever it takes. I know that this is not the best time, but I love you, Luke. And this guy that we're fighting, he's all about baiting people based on their deepest fears. You never told me. Why do you hate enclosed spaces like this? I love you, Jessica. It's a tough story for me to share. Luke explains that when he was younger, he was framed for a crime that he didn't commit by Diamondback and was sent to Seagate Prison. While there, he was used in experiments performed by Dr. Bernstein who was attempting to create a cell regeneration formula based on the same chemical compound used in the super soldier serum. He encased Luke in a contraption called the electro-biochemical system and repeatedly shock him. Luke can't remember whether it was for hours or days, but what happened as a result is that he was given unimaginable strength and impenetrable skin. But in his mind, he had, cre he had been changed from a man into a monster. Luke. So sorry you had to go through that. I can't even imagine how torturous it was. But you're not a monster. I hope you know that now. You're a hero. Well, we'll see. I keep asking myself that question sometimes. But wait. Do you hear that? I hear humming. Suddenly you watch as Luke and Jessica walk up on a woman sitting at a table with stuffed toy animal rabbits with teacups sitting in front of them. The woman is humming and pouring herself tea. Uh, excuse me? Who are you? Welcome to the mad tea party, my friends. Tea! Want to take a seat and join the White Rabbit? The woman is revealed to be Lorena Dodson, a.k.a. the White Rabbit, played by Juno Temple. Sorry, we're in a bit of a rush. You don't happen to work for Mr. Fear, do you? Oh, my bestest friend in the whole world. Yeah, ha! Huh? And I've been tasked with making sure you don't go get to his fun little device behind me. Luke and Jessica suddenly notice that sitting behind White Rabbit is a clean air converter that is slowly releasing fear gas. Listen, we don't want to hurt you, but we're going to have to turn off that machine. Aw, boo-hoo, you two don't want to come play with White Rabbit? Nope, to be honest, you're really starting to get on my last nerve. So I'm going to give you the option. You can either move... Or Power Woman and Power Man are going to make you move. How rude. Yes, very rude indeed. White Rabbit is very sad. Very sad you don't want to be friends. Sad Rabbit will have to hurt you. But fear said to stop you, so my children, it is time to come out and play. Suddenly watch as the stuffed animal rabbits begin shedding their cuddly exterior and are shown to be tiny robotic rabbits. They begin crawling towards Luke and Jessica. Uh, Luke, what the heck? No clue, but come on, these little machines are no match for us. He watches Luke and Jessica begin stomping on the mechanical rabbits. When they are being stomped on, they begin shocking Luke and Jessica, but the two work through the pain and manage to defeat all the rabbits. My babies! Jessica walks over to White Rabbit and punches her. That's for the shocks, lady. 
White Rabbit goes flying as we see Luke walk over to the machine, and he smashes it with his fist as fear gas slowly stops pouring out of the machine. White Rabbit chuckles. Teehee. Well, that is only the start. I will see you all again soon. We watch as White Rabbit throws a smoke bomb on the ground and escapes. Jessica turns to Luke and says, That felt easy. A bit too easy. I agree. But as long as we got the gas to stop pouring out from that device, that's all that matters. Let the others know. Jessica clicks a button on her watch and says, Team 3 has neutralized the first fear gas machine. Be warned, the device was being guarded by a mass goon. We cut to Team 2, who includes Mockingbird, Black Widow, and Elektra. They're walking down the southern area of the sewer. Elektra puts down her watch and says, Did you hear that? Matt wasn't wrong. It appears Mr. Fear has little surprises waiting for us. Well, thankfully, we are all skilled enough to handle whatever comes our way. Exactly. Once they get a look at my twin Psy, they will regret messing with the mighty Electra. Twin Psy, huh? When did you learn how to use those? The three heroes share their backstories with each other. Electra shares that she was trained by the hand since she was 10 years old but eventually left and was trained by the Chaste, led by a man named Stick, who taught her how to use her twin Psy. Eventually she returned to the Hand, and that's when she met the friends that she currently calls the Defenders. Yelena, on the other hand, shares that she was trained to be a Black Widow soldier since she was a girl, and was given a fake family, but that her fake family eventually grew to become her real family. And with that, she, u she believes that her widow bike gauntlets and batons are the most versatile and useful out of all the weapons. While Barbara, on the other hand, says that her battle stave is the most useful and most efficient in battle. It was her weapon of choice when she was trained by S.H.I.E.L.D. Her old buddy, Agent Johnson, used to give her a hard time and called them her batons. As the group continues down the sewer, they eventually see a woman and a group of hand ninjas standing in front of another clean air converter that is releasing fear gas. What the heck? The hand? What are you guys doing with someone working for fear? We watch as a woman turns around and is revealed to be Mary Walker, otherwise known as Typhoid Mary, played by Alice Eve, who smiles. Why, if it isn't the group of women I just heard talking about their pathetic life stories and their pitiful weapons. Your words carry down here, ladies. Not very smart of trained killers. Who are you and what are you doing with the hand? Well, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but the boys and I here were just catching up a bit. But as for me, sometimes I'm Mary Walker. In fact, most people wish I was Mary Walker all the time, but now I'm Typhoid Mary. The woman who gained immunity from poisons thanks to the Golden Awakening. But more importantly... Highly skilled with a sword in hand. We watch as Electra, Black Widow, and Mockingbird begin fighting the Hand Ninjas and Typhoid Mary. The three eventually overpower them as we watch Typhoid Mary get hit back. She laughs and says, Oh, unfortunately for you, this is only the start of what New York has coming. But I'll see you again, and you better be prepared. Typhoid Mary throws down a smoke bomb similar to White Rabbit and disappears. We then watch as the group looks around as Yelena walks up and uses her Widow Bite gauntlets to turn off the clean air converter as we watch fear gas slowly stop dispersing from the machine. Electra clicks her watch and says, Team 2 has neutralized the second clean air converter. We cut to Team 1, consisting of Daredevil and Hawkeye. Daredevil clicks his watch and says, Got it. Thank you. Team 1 is close to reaching the middle of the sewer. As Daredevil hangs up, he says, this is great that they're deactivating these machines so quickly, but it all seems a bit too quick. Fear wouldn't make it this easy. At least, I don't think he would. Have you met my wife before? She's the most powerful person I know, so it doesn't shock me that they're getting through these super fast. By the way, I mean to ask you something. Go ahead. Why did you become Daredevil in the first place? I mean, sure, running around fighting in a devil outfit must be fun and all, but why? When I was a kid, I lost my eyesight, pushing an old man out of the way of an oncoming truck. The truck lost control and spilled chemicals that got in my eyes. It burned. I'll never forget how much it burned. Shortly after, I found that I was unable to see, and I was blind the rest of my life. 
few months later, my father was killed after he broke a bet some mobsters took on him to lose in a boxing match he had. Batwin Jack Murdoch, they called him. Didn't know how to win, but also knew to never give up. I was lonely, but even worse, I found that while my eyesight had gone away, I could feel more than I had before. I could hear things I had never dreamed of being able to hear before. It was a blessing and a curse. Sure, I heard the sounds of the birds chirping and the rainfall at night. It was soothing, but I also heard the cries of children whose parents abused them and the sirens of police cars chasing criminals at night. I went into law school to learn how to hold people accountable within the confines of law. I became daredevil to act when the law did not go far enough. Suddenly, the duo hears clapping as they spy the third and final machine emitting fear gas. We suddenly watch a man dressed in all black jump down from the ceiling of the sewer. He's revealed to be Benjamin Poindexter, otherwise known as Bullseye, played by Wilson Bethel, who says, Well, well, Daredevil, I'm so glad we finally have the chance to see each other again. Bullseye, or should I say, Poindexter. The feeling is not mutual. Okay, so you wear a devil costume and you know all your villains on a personal basis? This is getting a bit weird, dude. Ah, you bought friends, Daredevil. Good. Because if Mr. Fear found out I killed you, he would have my face on a silver platter. But at least I can take your face and hang it up in my trophy room, as he points at Hawkeye. He then watches Daredevil and Hawkeye begin teaming up to fight Bullseye. Daredevil focuses on hand-to-hand -hand combat while Hawkeye fires arrows to distract Bullseye. Eventually, Daredevil is able to get the upper hand and pushes Bullseye away. He laughs. Go ahead, turn off the machine. It's all a part of his plan. Anyway, people have suffered mentally, but they will suffer physically next. I'll see you soon. Oh, and check the screens. I'd say in an hour or so. A big surprise is coming. Bullseye throws down a smoke ball and escapes and Hawkeye once again shoots his hot wire trick arrow at the machine and it stops emitting gas. Daredevil clicks his watch and says, all the machines have been turned off, but we just ran into Bullseye, and he said that there's a big surprise coming. We need to get to the bottom of this, and fast. We cut back to Luke and Jessica as Luke speaks into his watch. Well, Misty is questioning the only man who might have insight on what's going down. I can give her a call. Perfect. Thanks. As Matt clicks off from his watch, Hawkeye looks at him and says, Who is Misty and who is this man? Misty's a police detective. And she's interviewing Fisk. We cut inside an interrogation room where we see Wilson Fisk, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, sitting at a table. Standing across from him is Misty Knight, played by Simone Missick, who stands up and slams her fist on the table. I'm going to ask you one more time, Fisk. How is Dr. Drew involved in all of this? Fisk chuckles. I have been around gangsters my entire life, Miss Knight. These pathetic tactics do not faze me. You will have to do better to get me to break. Suddenly, watch as the interrogation room door opens as we see Daredevil standing with District Attorney Blake Tower, played by Stephen Ryder, who turns to Daredevil and says, The only reason I'm letting you do this is because public safety is at risk. Thank you, Mr. Tower. I knew I could count on you to pick up my call. Yeah, usually against my better judgment to answer calls from numbers with no ID, but at times like this, I thought I should answer. He watches Daredevil walks into the room as Misty turns to him and says, I've been asking him about Drew for hours. Hasn't budged an inch. Don't worry, I'll get him to talk. He watches Misty walks out of the room and closes the door as Fist begins to laugh. Well, what a lucky man I am. My favorite costume child visiting me in the slammer. Rough childhood, huh, Wilson? Is that a threat? No, but I know about the dirt that fear has on you. You really let him hold your past over you like that? I worked hard to pay off my father's debt he owed Mr. Rigoletto. Rigoletto believed that my father died in a workplace accident. But as you know... I killed him when he threatened my mother. He began wailing on her, and I took matters into my own hands. I worked vigilantly to repay Rigoletto, and eventually I overtook him, outworked him, and had many who fell into my debt as they previously did with Rigoletto. Cranston visited my mother, unbeknownst to me, and had an email communication typed up and prepared to send to all of my connections. 
but more importantly, Mr. Tower. I own a lot of members of the police force and those in the justice system, but I knew Tower would be ruthless. He campaigned on stopping public crime, so I knew there would be no amount I could give him that would get me out of this. So I decided to be amicable. I got to become mayor and make my riches while Cranston got to play his little games as well. And then he discarded you when he had no more use for you. That's why I'm here. I'm here to ask you for help, Wilson. You said that you ran to be mayor because you truly cared about the people in the city of New York. You wanted it to be better. And now I'm asking you, even though you've lost that title, to step up and become New York's protector and truly tell me what Cranston is planning. I need to know what his end game is. I respect your conviction and commitment to justice, my devil friend. But outside of the fear gas, I am out of the loop. But don't kid me, devil. I know you're not only here for that. You're right. I could have killed you when we fought. I wanted to with every fiber of my being. But I didn't. I couldn't. I don't kill. It goes against what I stand for. And what is that? Justice. Letting the laws of the land hold people accountable. Not vigilantes. I simply provide justice when the law does not provide an adequate remedy to a point. Then what is this? Are you afraid you may have to kill Cranston? Yes. He's hurting the people of New York. And as far as I can tell, he's not going to stop. He views this all as a game. If you couldn't kill me, what makes you think a coward like you would be willing to kill Cranston, even if he deserves it? Because I did kill you, Fisk. I killed your name. You mean nothing anymore. Wilson Fisk holds no power. All that power you talked about on the roof, over the judiciary, the people, it's done. I killed it. All that remains is a pathetic husk of a man. We suddenly watch as Missy opens up the door and says, Uh, Daredevil, you need to come see this. Daredevil puffs, and, he walk, and as he walks away, Fisk laughs. You and I, we're not so different there, Devil. I may be a husk, like you say crashing down from my ivory tower. But if you kill fear and be the hero New York needs, I will not be the only husk. Daredevil looks down as he walks out of the room. We cut to see various people around the city, including the defenders back at Matt's apartment, Nick Fury in his apartment, and the entire DA's office watching the television screen. We see that Mr. Fear has hacked into the radio towers and started his own broadcast. We see Fear standing in the center of the screen with Bullseye, Typhoid Mary, White Rabbit, and the Looter standing behind him. Fear begins to speak. Citizens of New York, the gas has stopped thanks to the valiant effort of your beloved heroes. However, this feat of theirs, it's not impressive. You see, the true test of their character is about to commence. I know most of you have heard of me on the news, asked whether I'm real or not. Probably looked behind you in the shadows, to make sure I'm not there. Why, I am fear, and yes, I'm quite real. I'm not alone, though. I was once, say, rejected, destitute, left-behind, to rot specimen. Until I grew in power, thanks to the murderous former mayor, you also blindly followed. And I want you to remember that. Everything that is about to happen today, it was your own doing. You all think that you're very smart, that you live in this ivory tower, that you can reject those who are different than you. But you don't know anything. You elected a man who wanted to cause you to suffer. And he did. So thank you for that. Because with your help, I've allowed my dreams to become reality. The team you see behind me helped me achieve this goal as well. Mr. Poindexter here. Bullseye, an orphan who's become one of the best marksmen in the world. Miss Walker, who suffers from a associative identity disorder caused by childhood trauma, but has become deadly with a blade and is now immune to poison thanks to the Great Golden Awakening. Mr. Fester, the looter, a scientist who is injured by his own gaseous creation but gained superhuman strength and helped develop the very gas you have all suffered from. 
and finally Miss Dodson, my Alice in Wonderland obsessed white rabbit, who has become formidable with her electronic rabbits. You may be asking why I'm doing these introductions, and it's because my team plays an important role in this major surprise announcement. The end of New York. I know, I know. Hold your applause and hold your screams. I know you may have all forgotten the hand. They haven't been active around the city recently. But that, my friends, is because I've been paying them to build up their numbers in the shadows. And tonight, the full might of the hand and my team will completely destroy New York. Kill civilians, burn buildings, all of your hard work you wasted your entire life for, your businesses, your hobbies, your life, that's all going up in flames. See, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need gas to cause you all fear. I'm doing it by hand. Now, there is one way this can be prevented. I am a reasonable man, after all. The man who you call Daredevil, your hero. The man without fear. Well, that title is a lie. He secretly does have one fear. Killing. I've watched his career closely, and if there is one thing he has never done before, it's kill. Now, my special surprise will launch in exactly one hour, unless the Daredevil agrees to join me in the basement of the Oscorp building, where we will settle our differences. Now, if any of you attempt to enter the building now to stop me, I will launch my attack now. It must be Daredevil, and only him. And if the devil is listening, I want him to know. This is a fight to the death. Only one of us will leave. One hour. Don't be late. As the broadcast ends, Tower looks at Daredevil as he watch him walk outside of the DA's office. We cut to the inside of Clinton Church where we see Daredevil sitting in silence. He is holding a rosary and is slumped over in the front pew. He removes his mask and prays. Father, please, clear my head. Let me know what is the right course of action. We watch Matt shed a tear as he puts his mask back on and leaves the church. Cut to a few minutes later as we watch Daredevil enter his apartment as the defenders look at him. Jessica clears her throat and says, Matt, what's the play here? I'm going to face fear. I need to do this alone. Oh, you are doing this alone. But we got your back when it comes to handling the hand and the rest of fear's posse. Clint is right. We got you covered. Whatever it takes, we're going to make sure New York is safe. Couldn't agree more. I sought you out when the hand removed me from their ranks. It is an honor to stand with you now, with your city on your back. We are the defenders. Like you said earlier, we're going to see if we earn that title. But this is a we problem, not just you. You handle fear, we got the rest. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We leave in three minutes. But first, a moment, please. We watch as Daredevil takes off his mask and walks over to Peter still lying on the couch as the remainder of the defenders leave the apartment. Matt kneels and says, Peter. I'm about to embark on my most challenging mission yet. I wish you were there beside me on this one. But like always, I know you will be there with me in spirit. Like I always say, I'm here for you till the end of the line, and I know you will be there with me as well. I'll be back soon. Keep recovering. We have a lot to catch up on when I'm back. He watches Matt leaves his rosary lying on Peter as he puts his mask back on and walks out of his apartment. Cut to the outside of the Oscorp building as we see police surrounding it, with Bullseye Looter, White Rabbit, Typhoid Mary, and members of the Hand blocking the entrance. We watch as the defenders, led by Daredevil and Hawkeye, walk to the front of the building. The crowd slowly moves aside as Daredevil continues into the building as the remaining members stay outside. Watch as Daredevil walks into the basement of the Oscorp building. He has flashbacks to playing boxing with his dad as a child and slowly growing up working on his craft. Watch as Daredevil enters into a makeshift boxing ring with Mr. Fear standing in the middle. Fear begins to clap. Ah, good, and with five minutes to spare. You made the right choice as always, Matthew. I take no pleasure in this, Professor Cranston. I'm not going to kill you. Fear is naturally difficult to overcome, Matthew, but you will. Mostly because I failed to tell you and everyone of my one final surprise. 
I have a bomb strapped to my chest. I, I know, I know. If you stop fighting, I take you, myself, and everyone in this city out with me. You win, I detonate it, and if I win, well, we see what happens. You're a monster, Cranston. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I am. But we don't need to do this. Society has made me this way, Matthew. I was a nobody, an outcast, as I said earlier. Regardless of what transpires here tonight, I'll be going out on top with my number one tormentor right beside me. I'll no longer be an afterthought. I call that a worthy prize for all I've suffered from. I'm truly at a loss for words. Society didn't make you an outcast. You made yourself an outcast, Cranston. Because you made yourself a monster. Fear chuckles, picks up a walkie-talkie, and says, Launch the attack now! We cut outside as we see members of the hand begin attacking the police as the defenders fight alongside the police to stop Fear's gang and the members of the hand joining them. Daredevil leaps at Fear as he screams, My magnum opus begins now! Suddenly, loud noises begin blasting from boomboxes hanging around the room. Daredevil clutches his ears as Fear screams, Loud noises, Matthew! I know your weakness, as I said, I've been watching. But, again, you better not stop fighting. It begins now, boy. You better pay attention. We cut to various battles taking place. Luke Cage is fighting the looter. Jessica Jones is fighting the White Rabbit. Mockingbird and Yelena are fighting Typhoid Mary. Hawkeye is fighting Bullseye. And Elektra and members of the police force are fighting the Hand. Inside the building, the loud bursts of sound are causing Daredevil to lose his sense of direction. He begins swinging rapidly but is unable to hit Fear. Fear pummels him. We hear Daredevil's bones crack. His jaw begins to bleed and his knees give out. Daredevil falls to the ground, but begins to counterattack before getting smacked back by Fear. Fear lifts Daredevil up by the head and screams, Anything to say, Matthew? You lost. You can't do it now. Daredevil chuckles. You can beat me. Break me, Cranston. But like my dad always told me, Murdochs don't have to win. We just need to know to never give up. Suddenly, we watch Fear break Daredevil's neck as his lifeless body falls to the ground. The sound cuts off as we hear a thud. Daredevil, the man without fear, is dead. We quickly cut back to Matt's apartment as we see Peter s shoot up and scream, No! His spidey sense has alerted him to Daredevil's death. On the outside of the building, we see that White Rabbit, Typhoid Mary, and the Looter have all been defeated as we watch Hawkeye in the struggle with Bullseye. Bullseye knocks the bow out of Hawkeye's hand and holds a knife up to his throat as Luke Cage quickly runs and slams into Bullseye, the force of which causes him to hit a wall so hard he gets knocked out. Thanks, big guy. No problem, Birdman. Suddenly we watch as Mr. Fear emerges from the Oscorp building holding the lifeless body of Daredevil and screams, Behold, the devil is fallen. I am victorious and I have no more use for this city. Now that my fun is over, ready for fireworks, anyone? Matt! Screams Jessica as the rest of the defenders look on in horror. Electra has a tear in her eye as she leaps at fear. We then watch as each of the defenders takes a turn hitting him. Electra stabs his arm while Jessica punches his back. Hawkeye hits him in his mask with his bow. Mockingbird takes out his legs with her battle stave. Elena shocks him with her widow bite and Luke delivers a finishing blow breaking his mask and knocking him out, but not before Fear manages to activate the bomb that begins a one-minute countdown. He has a bomb. He's going to blow up the city. Out of my way. I got this. He watches Luke grabs Cranston and begins running towards the docks. As we see the countdown clock reaching five seconds remaining, Luke uses all of his remaining strength to throw Cranston as far away from the city and towards the ocean as he can. He watches a bomb goes off, and as the dust settles... No trace of Cranston remains. As Luke returns to Oscorp, we watch as the defenders kneel next to the lifeless body of Daredevil, as suddenly we watch as Spider-Man is limping towards the scene, crying. Jessica goes to console him as he screams, No! No! 
As he pushes her aside, he falls to the ground, weeping on Daredevil's lifeless body. We cut to Clinton Church a few days later as we see a funeral taking place for the fallen Matthew Murdoch, a man who was killed during the, the attack on New York. In the crowd, we see familiar faces. Nick Fury, all members of the Defenders, Claire Temple, Blake Tower, Peter Parker, May Parker, played by Marissa Tomei, Karen Page, played by Deborah Ann Wool, and other members of the community who listen as Foggy Nelson, played by Eldon Henson, gives a eulogy for his fallen best friend. I know not many of you had the joy of being able to call Matthew a best friend, but I did. He was with me through law school, through the bar, through the ups and downs when we started Nelson and Murdoch. Matt cared a lot about justice. And while we live in a big country here in New York, I hope Matt knows he can rest easy. He truly did everything he could to make justice mean something here. We watch as people pay their final respects at the casket of Matthew Murdoch including Peter Parker. Carrying Matt's rosary, he packs his casket and chokes out. I'm with you till the end of the line, Matt. Always will be. Outside, we see Nick Fury looking out at New York. We notice a new mural of Daredevil has been painted on a vacant wall nearby with the caption, Hero, underneath. Quint walks outside beside Fury as Fury turns to him. I appreciate you and Barbara coming out here for me like this. Well, in a weird way, I want to thank you. Thank me? Yeah, I learned a lot, Fury. I told you. I have two men that I respect greatly. Their names included Iron and America in their titles. But you can add another to that list. Daredevil. Truly a selfless guy. A real hero. He gave his all for this city, and he truly did give it all up to save the day at the very end. That he did, and that he is. New York was lucky to have the Defenders here to help them out. Hopefully this is the last thing we will have to deal with for a while. Come on, Fury. You and I both know this is only the start. As Clinton and Fury shake hands, we zoom out over the city as the theme of New York, New York by Frank Sinatra plays again, and the movie ends. We have two post credit scenes. In the first post credit scene, we see an empty podium in front of New York City Hall. Suddenly, we watch as Luke Cage, dressed in a suit, walks to the podium and begins to talk. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Many of you know me as one of the guys who fought against fear the other week. Or the guy who has been dubbed the Hero of Harlem. Well, I'd like to think I'm a hero, but I don't think I've earned that title yet. I had a friend. A great friend who gave his all to this city with the belief that providing justice could make New York safer, stronger, and better than it was the day before. My friend is gone now, but I'm here today to share my commitment to keep his vision going, to make New York the best city it can possibly be. My name is Luke Cage, and I'm running for mayor of New York in the upcoming special election. In the second post credit scene, we cut to the Avengers Mansion where we see Clint Barton standing with Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans. Clint shakes his head. It was a shame. We did everything we could to protect New York, but we still lost a great man. New York was lucky to have you guys, but I've been thinking. There are a lot of places that need protection and don't have a team like the Defenders to provide that for them. Like California. Have you not been there with Barbara during the Circus of Crimes attack? Who knows what might have happened? What are you saying? Perhaps we don't need a single team of heroes, but maybe multiple sects for different areas of the world. Like an Avengers West Coast, led by Hawkeye. The West Coast Avengers. That has a nice ring to it. Sure, Cap? I'm in. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Defenders. I know that now Daredevil is dead, and we will explore that coming up. I'm not going to say much more on that. Daredevil is one of my favorite Marvel characters, and the entire rebooted MCU will miss him.
But with that being said, we have one more episode in Rebooted MCU Phase 4, X-Men Origins, which will be next week. Get excited for that. Again, make sure to join the Discord below, follow the Instagram page, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And you can now click to watch the previous episode of Rebooted MCU, which is Spider-Man King of the Neighborhood. And again, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's continue on the road to 1,000. I will see you all next week.